Auburn baseball is back. Let's get in here and talk about it on this episode of the Uptempo Podcast. You are now listening to the War Report Podcast Network. What is up, Up Tempo family? What is up, Auburn family? It is time. The wait is over. Auburn baseball is finally back. Dustin, how are you doing, man? Uh, we got a special guest. I just, I can't wait. I'm so excited. Uh, I'm ready. I'm ready for it, Dustin. Yes, sir. It is our time of year, Blake. Baseball season is around the corner, but I know somebody who is more fired up than me and you, our guy, Zach Crotchfield, back on the podcast. Been a minute. Haven't talked to you since the conclusion of last year, but we opened up this season this Friday, brother. We're excited to see you and the boys. How you doing, buddy? Yes, sir. Doing great. Excited for the uh, season to get started here. Ready to go uh, kick some butt, see somebody else in the box besides orange and blue, you know? Right. Yes, yeah, sir. Zach, let's get this thing started, brother. Like, uh, it the wait is over. Like I said, it, it's finally back. You know, the the disappointing ending the last year, and uh, it was tough going out like that. But hey, Auburn hits the transfer portal. Uh, you you stack talent this year. You get guys to return. Uh, you have a change in pitching coach, and uh, it seems like everybody's just uh, pumped for Auburn baseball. And and We'll start there with Evan Tiford, man, and and the new guy on the block and coming from the pros and coming into Auburn as the new pitching coach. Uh, how excited are you about that move, Zach? I mean, it's huge um, getting somebody from the um, you know that has experience on the pro level, um, and you know we're not the pro level, so to have that kind of you know that knowledge that nobody else is going to have, I mean, it just gives us a huge. <clears throat> leg up on the competition um the transition has been great teeth is i mean he's just a great dude overall um you know he almost feels like you know one of the guys and we have a lot of respect for him and he knows how to you know push us to work hard but also kind of keeps it laid back um has a lot of trust in us that we're gonna be professional and you know get done what we're supposed to get done mm -hmm. um and i mean it's it's been great i i think you ask anybody on the team, and they'll tell you the same thing. Where does where does Scott Foxhall where does he play in that? I know he comes over from Mississippi State, and he spent time at Auburn. Uh, where does he play this year, and what is his role? Yeah, he's going to be our uh, bullpen pitching coach. Um, <clears throat> and you know, it's been you know coming out of the bullpen, it's been it's been great working with him. Um, you know, he has a lot of experience. Uh, just with the game and, and the pitching side of the games more specifically. Um, and, you know, I've still been searching for, you know, things that I can do that can help me coming out of the bullpen because I'm still learning. And, um, you know, he's been great with just giving me some tips here or there. Uh, you know, the timing is huge in the bullpen, and he's been great about, you know, keeping things in a timely fashion, making sure we're ready to go in the game. I mean, it's it's just been great having both of them, and they also they work so get so good together. Like, I don't know, mm -hmm. two bros with a pitching staff, it's done, man. It's awesome. Love that. Love to hear it. Excited to have them on the planes, uh, and and excited for you this year, Zach. You know, last year you you had your opportunities to start, and then you went to the bullpen, and uh, I think you really turned it on. In, in, in that part of your game, and you really picked it up, and, and you were electric towards the end of the year. You really grew as a pitcher on the mound for the Auburn Tigers. Are you more comfortable in the bullpen, Zach? And I know you I know you want to start and everything, and I know that's that dog in you and that competitor, but going out there into the bullpen, did that help you in your game and, at, like, in your first year as a true freshman for the Auburn Tigers? Yeah, I mean, it's – I guess I would say I'm more comfortable relieving right now just because that's what I've been used to for, you know, a while now. Um, so I guess I feel a little more comfortable with that. But, of course, you know, that, that starter in me, you know, it's right there. It needs to come out. Um, but, I mean, yeah, just last year, how much that I've learned um, that I didn't think I'd learn as a reliever. And, you know, I've just – the game has taught me a lot just – how to handle myself, how to, 
to grow and learn from, you know, mistakes and turn them into positives. Um, being a better teammate, I just – I've learned hmm. so much, you know, over the past year. Um, it probably – I've learned more and matured more over the last year than I have probably all my years playing baseball. I mean, it's just – it's crazy what college baseball, you know, is awesome. That's awesome. That's it's great to hear. And and I know you come so far from home, and I know it, that part of it had to be tough for you. And just being away from family, and you're down here in Alabama and having to adjust. And I thought you just handled it uh, exceptionally well, Zach. And it was fun watching you grow last year on the mound. I, I, one thing that I had to ask is Nate Larue is gone. And I know he spent a lot of time behind the plate. And there's a lot of uh, excitement for Ike Irish. And we got to see him in that DH role last year. But how has Ike uh, moved into that catcher spot? And how has it transitioned for you? Is it any different with Nate not being back there? Or uh, are you are you good with Ike receiving you? Or how, how has that been? Yeah, I mean – I got to, you know, I got to give my flowers to Nate because he, you know, he was a great game game manager. Um, I mean, as a freshman, especially, I never felt like I was out there alone. I always had, you know, I knew somebody was, you know, had my back no matter what. And, um, you know, not to say that other guys didn't, but it was, you know, when it's you and the catcher out there, you know, that's, that's the guy you need the most. Um, and I think, I think it was good, um, you know, that Ike still worked with the catchers last year, still, you know, was talking to, to Nate and Ryan Dial and Carter Wright about, you know, picking up on certain things and what I can do to be better, you know, just picking brains, stuff like that. Um, and it showed up this year, you know. And I, I, that's, I give credit to Ike for, you know, he's focused on being in the DH spot, playing a little first base, um, but he's also – still getting his work in as a catcher, even though he's not actually on the field. Um, and I give credit to him because he's done a great job. I I mean, it's hard to be better than Nate, I guess. Um, I don't think Ike's far behind, but he's still got some stuff that, you know, he can get better at just like the rest of us. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, I think as the year goes on, as we play, um, I think he'll learn more and he'll start to make more adjustments. I mean, just what what a SEC game can teach you over an inner squad. It's it's night and day, you know. So I think once we get playing, he'll he'll start to come, you know, he'll start to come into it a little better, get better at the little things. And I, I don't know. I think he'll be fine. He's he's been he's been putting in work, so I have confidence in him. Love to hear that. And I know everybody is excited to see Ike Irish behind the dish. Zach, my last question before I kick it over here to Dustin, brother, is, is can I say one thing real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, his bat is just as hot as well. He's <laughs> <laughs> been over the ball too, so I don't even know what's about to happen with like this year. He's gonna have a great year. I just had to throw that in there because I know that's what the people want. Zach, last year, <laughs> uh, last year, so I watched Ike Irish play his first game, and. I said, this guy's different. This guy, his swing, it reminds me so much of who is now a New York Yankee, Juan (laughs) Soto. All right. And I call him Baby Soto because it it's it's freaky how close it is. And just the maturity at the plate and the way he works the counts, and he's never out of a count. And I, even in the fall, I was watching him in some of his at bats, and I was just like, "Man, this dude! Like that was year one. Like, that's incredible." And I know a lot of us, like before we got into SEC play last year, we're like, "He's about to fall off a little bit, you know? Like it's not going to be a drastic fall off." And then he never fell off, and we were just kind of like, "Hey, this guy, he's the real deal." And I just watch him and Soto, and I put them side by side, and it's just freaky to me. I mean. He's elite, man. Yeah, I mean, when I think of, you know, Ike Irish and, for that matter, any any one of those big leaguers, you know, that has a really good swing, the word that comes to mind is pure. Like, besides major leaguers, firsthand I have seen 
out of all the batters I've seen firsthand, he's the most pure hitter that I've ever seen. And the way that he uses the whole field is, you know, I I hit in high school. I, I wasn't great, but, like, I, I could not use the whole field like him. It's it's so impressive, the balls that he shoots through the 5-6 hole that hmm. – they, they get hit into the left center gap to the deepest part of the park. Like, you put me up there, I ain't doing that. And half the other hitters in the SEC ain't doing it either. You know, he's and, – and he's got the pull side power. When he when he hits the ball square, it's it's a bullet coming off the bat. Like, you better watch out. Um, I mean, yeah, he's just – and it up here is really where it is because he has the physical tools. You know, his swing is, is pure, it's sweet, and he's strong. But, like, his mentality is so, like, I'm better than you. And it doesn't matter what you do, say, try, anything. I'm better than you. I mean, mm. pitches I try to throw to him are, like, pitches I wouldn't throw to anybody else. I'm throwing, I'm throwing <laughs> lefty change-ups up and in like I'm playing MLB The Show trying to get this. Because <laughs> if I throw him a fastball, he's going to put it over the left field wall, you know? Like, you know, with him, it's just, you know, they tell pitchers, you know, it's not about who's in the box, but you can't help but notice Ike is standing. <laughs> yeah, facts. When you talk, Zach, you talk about how you matured in one year more than you have in your entire life. And uh, I know that you think the world of Butch Thompson. How much of a role did he play in that maturity process? Yeah, I mean, I guess the biggest way that I can think of is I'm – you know, I feel like I'm a perfectionist. I try to be perfect at everything. I, I'm hard on myself when I'm not. And one thing that I had to learn was, you know, there's plenty of opportunities and, you know, one failure is not the end of the world. And it's okay to go two weeks with not having your stuff and because it's just part of the process. And, you know, one thing that I remember him telling me um, in the fall of last uh, of my freshman year, he said, I don't I don't care if you go out there every time that you pitch, you get lit up. It's your year to learn. You know? And I was like, huh. You know, I kind of resonated. I was like, man, maybe, maybe I should just trust that. And if I fail, it's it's okay. It's part of the process. And you know, it's it's hard to not be product focused, especially in today's world. Um to, you know, and to just focus on the process and failure is okay. It's just stepping to, you know, reaching that success. I mean, he's just so, like, wise. And, he, you know, he says stuff and you're like, hmm, I wonder if he's going to be right. And every single time he's right. And it's just like, <laughs> good old Butch, you know, he's right all the time. Maybe I should listen to this guy. You know, he's got yeah, – he's great. Everybody loves him. He couldn't ask for a better head coach. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And you see, like Bruce Pearl and Hugh Freeze just just this week saying it's one of the best guys around campus, man. Everyone everyone just thinks the world of Bruce, or excuse me, of Butch. So, Zach, when we're looking at, we talk about last year. Blake kind of mentioned in the beginning. You're hosting a regional, right? And then it's it's two when you're done. So, we've talked to a couple of you guys off the record, and y'all may know, you know, you don't hide from it. That's not what you wanted it to do. And I remember it was two years ago, I think Butch said, we're at the level now where we want to compete. We want to get to Omaha, and we want to compete. I actually watched y'all – I think it was a fall ball scrimmage. I went up for the Ole Miss game to watch the football game, and I watched y'all, and I was like, man, they were, this team's got it's got some pieces. You got some electric arms starting, you know, if Gonzo can come back and anchor it. You got some guys like you coming out the bullpen. Um Looking at what happened last year and the way it ended, how much is the clubhouse, the locker room? Are y'all are y'all using that as motivation? Like, hey, we we know what happened last year in front of our home fans, and we we got a little bit of unfinished business. It's got to be going around, right? Yeah, it's you know we don't. I guess because we want to keep the bad juju away, and we just want to leave what's in the past in the past. We don't talk about it, but right the the feeling you know everybody knows what happened everybody knows that it was embarrassing what happened and everybody knows that we are not gonna let that happen again let's go you know like it's just it's that i guess it, yeah it is motivating <clears throat> because we don't want we don't want history to repeat itself not that way you know and i think we're ending that uh ending off that way last year with the talent that we did have because we were still a solid team yeah. You know, we took that into this year 
and you know kind of tried to instill that on the the young guys that were coming in and you know instill that into the new guys that were coming over um and i mean the leadership has been i think spot on for the type of team that we have everybody is super close you know i i talk about chemistry man i don't know how it gets much better than this hmm. show up every, every day to the field with a big smile on my face like i'm about to go hang out with my boys for a few hours you know it's like when you have that, that's when teams become dangerous because everybody in this league can do it, you know. But having that culture and, you know, knowing that everybody's got your back and we're going to fight for one another, like <laughs> you go into it, you feel like you got God on your side, you know. Right. Yeah, we love to hear that, man. That, that's good stuff. I think all the Auburn fans will be excited. When – you kind of mentioned that you've been, you know, Blake talked about you coming out the bullpen, man, and just you have that fastball that's electric, right? One thing that I've noticed from you and anyone that's watched you play right out the jump is the intensity that you play with on the mound. You like playing baseball, and like you said, you're perfectionist. You want to win uh, so much that you have to take a step back and kind of learn it's okay to make a mistake. But I like watching a guy like you play, man. It's fun to watch. Where does that intensity, where does that that fire just I cannot lose? Do you always have that in you? Yeah, I mean, that's I, – I pitch off of emotion. Mm -hmm. Not – not to say I'm going to let, you know, something negative or, you know, a negative emotion determine how I perform um, because that's, you know, that's the mental side. And I'm I'm good at not doing that. You know, I can move on quick. But I mean, if, if you think about it, it's the other guys, you know, the guys on the other side are trying to take away my opportunity, our opportunity. And, you know, baseball is such a business now that they're stepping in the way of my business. The thing that is <laughs> put food on my table right. and clothes on my kids' backs. You, you you can't do that. You know what I mean? Like, mom needs a new house. Mom needs a car. All that, right? So you're getting in my way of doing that. And, you know, you mess with my family, then we got problems. So that's like, that's kind of the mindset that I have is it, I try to make it personal. So, right. you know, starts that fire inside of me. You know, even right now, I'm like, oh, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Uh, but it starts at five, then, then you think about, you see your guys in the field make plays, make it dive in plays, putting runs on the board. It's like, okay, these guys feel the same way, and they got my back, so why would I not have their back? And it just, it's more, it's more. It's just so much deeper than a game, you know. It's just, it, it's, right. it's deeper than that for me, you know. That's why I have so much emotion. And, and Your mom definitely deserves a new house, bro. I'll give you that. Absolutely. <laughs> the, only the big one, the nicest car. Nothing. Yeah, for sure. Uh, fellas, I got to say this, Zach, you letting that New Jersey come out of you a little bit, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you're not familiar with it, it might be. Hey, we like, we like to see that swag, man. Uh, one last thing I got for you, dude, is we've all seen throughout the summer, the renovations coming on in Plainsman Park. So how excited are you for the additions coming? And then how important is it for the fans to get out there this year, pack Plainsman Park? How important is it for you, 3-2 count, Zach's on the mound, Plainsman Park gets behind him. How how important is that energy for you guys? I mean, y'all feed off of that, right? Yeah, I mean, there's <laughs> – I don't think you could ask for anything more. When you, when you have 5,000 people that have your back right there, man it's it, it's awesome it's like it gives you this superpower it's like i have to do it because right. everybody you know cheering me on they got my back i have to do it um and you know to kind of go into that they added you know a new section of seating um that's closer to the field yeah um, and you know I, before they had put the chairs and stuff in there we got to sit back there and watch you know live and all that stuff and man is what a view. I feel like I'm sitting at a major league park and I got behind home plate seats. It's you can see the pitches move. You can see into our dugout, which is a little concerning because, you know, we are <laughs> kind of kids at heart. Um, so, you know, if you see anything crazy, just just give us your grace. We're, st we're still, you know, we're still 20 years old. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But, I mean, you know, you got the closer seating, which is awesome. You got the seating out in right center field. Um, you know, for like the student section. And I, I mean, man, when we go to other places, we got the, you know, the fans in the outfield talking crap to us and right. chirping us all the time. What, you know, we need some of that. So we'd love if, you know, some fans got out there and they chirped a little bit, they cheered us on, you know, it just, 
it would, you know, really liven it up because there's nothing out in the out. There's no fans in the outfield. So you got screaming coming from that way. Now it's really on top of, you know, the other team. Um, and, you know, I think this team is going to really play off energy and momentum. So we need, as you know, everybody there that we can get. Um, and then, you know, on top of that, we have the um, – what is that? Uh, the the legends. Um, the Frank era. Thomas Clubhouse. Yeah, the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, I think that'll be you know that'll be awesome. We're probably not gonna go back there because there's alcohol back there. <laughs> probably shouldn't go back there. Um, but yeah, I think that'll be awesome. It'll just bring um, you know maybe some new faces to the park. Um, you know, give people another reason to be there, something that they can enjoy, and you know, like it's been hyped up. It's supposed to be one of the nicest facilities and. You know, and the ballpark. So I'm looking forward to seeing the finished product. I think it's going to be beautiful. Yeah. Zach Crotchfeld issuing a challenge to the Auburn students. Get out there to that outfield, man, and chirp the other teams. Just chirp yeah. them. You, you, you be friendly with them, but let them know, man, you're uh, you're in the plains. What you got to play before we get out of here? Zach, I, I just got a couple more for you uh, before we let you go. I don't want to keep you too much longer, brother, but I, I wanted to ask you some newcomers that, that, are, that are fresh on the block who we might not be really familiar with uh, or some guys that were here last year that didn't get a lot of run. Just give me, just give me a couple names that in that, in that staff, uh, who could, who could we see this year that really surprise us? Yeah, definitely. Um, when you talk about <clears throat> uh, newcomers, um, you know, it's hard not to just be biased and talk about pitchers. Um, but I will say that, you know, we got Cameron Tilly, right-handed pitcher. I mean, he's got an electric fastball, dirty splitter, nasty slider. Like, you know, he's he's a dude for sure. Um, and I think that, you know, I think he might even get a few start opportunities. And, you know, when he's coming out of the bullpen, you know, I'm, I think he's going to have a lot of success. Um, I'm pretty biased to saying Griffin Graves because his fastball plays just like mine. You know, it's power fastball low to mid nineties with a lot of ride. It's, it's quality, you know, like, um, he's got a little ways to go on his off speed stuff, but he's, you know, he's a freshman and he's got a fastball that plays really well. I think he had he pitched two innings. He had like four strikeouts today. Um, he was electric. Um, so I think he's going to be really good as well. Um, talk about a position player. I have never seen a friend, a, a freshman, let alone anybody, hit balls like Cole Edwards. I oh my God, he finally hit a home run through all the fall and through the you know the beginning of this year. He's yet to hit a home run, and he finally hit one. And as soon as he hit it, everybody jumped off the bench, was staring at it. We watched it in video the next day. It was a hundred and fifteen off the bat, and it was just heat seeking missile and it was every time he hits the ball it's 110 plus he's he's dangerous so you know that's another one to be on the lookout for um you know that's as far as freshmen let's say some transfer portal guys Javon Hernandez I mean you can't not love the kid he's he's super small but he can fly he can hit for power he's his fielding skills are immaculate like he's very impressive um Derek Fabian transfer from Florida he's 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 actually my roommate so I'm again a little biased but his his fielding skills are so impressive it looks so smooth and effortless um and I think that his mind is is really great like he has a great baseball mind his game sense is amazing he he's never you know lo he never lost composure he can make an error and the ball's right in front of him Nice and slow, picks it up, delivers a good th – you know, he does not get sped up by the game. And it's – I love watching him play. I just think he's just a player, man. He's he's one of those, you know. Well, Zach, a little off topic from Auburn. I kind of wanted to ask you this one, and I brought him up just a minute ago. I know you're a big Yankees guy from up in Jersey, and, and you know, we get Juan Soto. Uh, what do you think the New York Yankees have in store for this year? <laughs> ah, man. this is this is a tough question because you know that's my team and you know I'm always going to support them through thick and thin but I'm never going to lie about how they play 
they they struggled last year, you know. Um, but I think the um, I think the Verdugo signing could be good. I think the Soto signing is huge. Um, I think the Stroman signing is also huge. And you know, we brought it. It's almost like a college team. You know, we brought some guys for the transfer portal. You know, we got Dominguez coming up. He's a freshman. Um, you know, it's. I think we're gonna put the pieces together and have a good year. Are we gonna get through the playoffs? I'm not gonna say no, but I'm not confident in the answer. Yes, you know I have faith. Of course, it's baseball; anything can happen. But you know we're gonna need to we're gonna need to change some things around if we want to, you know, make it back to a chip. <laughs> Love that. I agree with you 100, percent Zach. Dustin, you got anything else? And uh, you can close this out, brother. Yeah, I just wanted to remind y'all that y'all ain't beating the Rays. That the uh... The AL East running through Tampa anyway, so y'all can talk about whatever y'all talking about down there. Um, <laughs> so listen, uh, we appreciate you, Zach. Man, we think that uh, you're gonna have a big year, brother. Uh, just man, get out there to Plainsman Park, everybody. Support this team. Zach told you how important y'all support is, right? So get out there and do that for us. Opening up this Friday, man. Uh, Eastern Kentucky, right, Zach? Eastern Kentucky coming in there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So get out there to Plainsman Park, baby. Pack that thing out. Support Zach and the boys. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you have not. Support Auburn baseball. Support Auburn baseball content. We love each and every one of you guys. War Damn Eagle, man. We're out of here. War Damn, baby.